today we're going to go over some fairly useful tips and tricks in GTA Online that I use all the time. The first one is going to be going into a solo public session. This is extremely useful, especially if griefers annoy you all the time whenever you're trying to do anything business related in GTA Online. So to start things off, you want to go into story mode. Once you're in story mode, go to your PlayStation or Xbox dashboard and head on over to the settings, then network, then settings again, set up internet connection, and choose the network you're connected to. From there, click advanced settings and go to the MTU settings. If it's set to automatic, switch it to manual and set the MTU number to 800. It should be set at 1500 normally. From there, just go ahead and connect to the network and then to the internet, which should only take about five seconds. From there, you can go back into GTA 5 and join into a public session in GTA Online. And you'll notice that when you load in, you will be the only person in the entire session. This is definitely one of the most useful tricks that I use all the time in GTA Online. Anytime I'm trying to make a video or I'm trying to sell anything or just do anything really in GTA Online and I don't want to be bothered by other players, but I need to be in a public session in order to do those things, I just load up into a solo public session and now I could do everything I would normally in a public lobby but I can do it by myself. Next is going to be the Oppressor Mark II flying trick. Now I use this every time I fly the Oppressor Mark II because I can fly much faster and it's really simple to do. I made a video on different ways to fly the Oppressor Mark II and which one was the fastest and I'll link that down below in the description. Anyways, in order to do this, start flying your Oppressor Mark II as you would normally. Once you're up in the air, you wanna hold the right bumper on PlayStation or Xbox or space on PC and it will retract the wings into the bike and now you guys are gonna fly a lot faster. Just to show you how much faster you can actually go, I'm gonna put this clip next to a clip of me flying the Oppressor Mark II normally, and you could clearly see how much faster you're going by using this trick while flying the Oppressor Mark II. Like I said, this is something I do every single time I fly this bike. It's even more beneficial when you're traveling long distances. Going 22 miles per hour faster will make a huge difference if you're going from the bottom to the top of the map. So just remember that in the future, next time you use the Oppressor Mark II, and like I said, there are other ways that you could fly the Oppressor Mark II faster. If you don't want to use this method, there are a few other ones. Like this method, for example, where you can recharge the rocket boost mid-flight, and you can continue to use it. Now, as I said, the method I just showed you earlier is the fastest. I've tested them all before, and if you wanted to check out that video, the link is down below in the description. But pretty much in order to do this one, all you need to do is lightly let your finger off of the accelerator while also holding down that right bumper to retract the wings. You'll be flying roughly at a speed of, I believe, like 122 or 123 miles per hour, which is still a lot faster than you would normally on the Oppressor Mark II which of course is only 108 miles per hour. And then once you hit that rocket boost, you're hitting speeds up to 150 miles per hour. So this method is also pretty great. Like I said, everything you need is down below in the description if you wanted some more information on it. Another trick I use all the time after races or after missions, when I spawn on top of a mountain, I jump off the side, I kill myself, and I still spawn on the mountain. It gets super annoying. So this is a really quick way that you can teleport pretty much to any location you want to. Pretty much what you need to do is go to your map blip options, and then go to jobs, and then go to land races, and select show instead of hide. From there, find a land race that is near an area you want to teleport to, and all you have to do is click square and click start job. From there, start the job up, load into it, confirm the settings, and actually start the race. Once the countdown ends, all you need to do is quit the job and you'll spawn in wherever that race was located on the map, meaning you just teleported from the top of a mountain all the way to wherever you needed to be. There are obviously a few other ways you could do this. One other option that I use all the time is changing my spawn location to an area that I want to teleport to. Obviously, you're only able to teleport to locations that you own, like your Arcadius Business Center, your clubhouse, your yacht, and things like that. From there, go to your accessories and then just change your sunglasses. And in the bottom right corner, you'll see a little loading circle. Once that circle goes away, just click Find New Session, and then you'll just load into a brand new lobby and you'll be at that location. To be honest, I use both of these methods all the time. I don't really see one being more useful than the other. I do have to admit, though, this one right here where you find a new session is a lot faster. I did this in about 40 seconds, I think. And then the other one I showed you took about a minute and a half. So if you're worried about spending too much time on it, then obviously do the one where you could just find a new session and just spawn wherever you need to spawn. But of course, that other one, you can practically teleport to any location you need to on the map. This next tip is definitely really useful, especially if you enjoy upgrading your cars in GTA 5, but you're low on money. I pretty much did a test a little while ago testing what you should put on first between the engine upgrade, transmission, turbo, brakes, and armor. 
and I came to this conclusion. The first upgrade you'd want to put on is going to be an EMS upgrade. It makes the biggest difference in terms of all of the performance upgrades you can put on your car. So the first thing you want to do is pop the engine upgrade on. And of course, if you want to see more detail on this, this video will be linked down below in the description so you can see everything that I did all in one spot. So check it out down below. The next upgrade you'd want to put on in terms of performance is a transmission. It does make a pretty decent difference, especially when you're racing. You could see the difference of time when I was using a stock transmission and then a race transmission and then a super transmission. It's not a huge difference, but it still plays a part and compared to other performance upgrades, it does benefit you more when you're racing. Technically turbos are going to be tied for second place, but I just put it down one below because it is fairly expensive. So if you need to save up a little bit more money for it, you can can, but it does play a huge part in racing and it makes your car a lot faster. Number four is going to be armor. Now, honestly, you could put this on first if you are a truly terrible driver, but if you know you're not too bad, then honestly, you really don't need to put armor on right away. But having no armor compared to 100% armor makes a massive difference. As you guys can see right here, the car with 100% armor looks practically fine except for the windshield. And then you can see the one with no armor looks pretty banged up. This was actually one of my favorite tests to do because it was really cool how I dropped the cars from really high up and they were traveling at speeds of like 150 miles per hour, slamming into the ground, and you'll see that the car with no armor on it does take a pretty decent amount of damage. I would honestly think it would take a lot more damage, but still, it's a lot more damaged than the car with 100% armor, which like I said, looks practically fine, except for the windshield. And finally, we got brakes. I wouldn't even recommend purchasing them, to be honest. You can see the difference here. Fully maxed out race brakes and stock brakes, and it's a barely that different. So imagine putting sport brakes on and street brakes on. It really doesn't make that much of a difference at the end of the day. So I'd recommend putting that on last or not even putting it on at all. Just before we end off the video, let's take a quick look at today's sponsor. Have you ever wanted to play GTA 5 as a police officer or as a doctor or as a gang member or drive hundreds of different real cars? If so, check out Grand RP, one of the best roleplay servers in the world. If you click the link down below in the description, when you join, you get 20 $25,000 in game completely free. Anyways, guys, that pretty much wraps the video up for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you went on to enjoy it, and hopefully, these tips and tricks help you out in the future when you play GTA Online. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.